Okay lads, if you clicked on this video because of what I wrote in the thumbnail, then that is exactly what we will talk about. For some relevant context, I'm Roman Catholic, just so we're clear on where I'm standing. So, the thing that I want everyone to consider when thinking about this anime is that while it has this angle of a historical presentation of heliocentrism's journey from something that is not accepted by religious authorities to what we now know today as common sense, the author of this story took quite a bunch of liberties to give us this unironically good anime. Chief among these liberties, and the one that I want to emphasize in this video, is the notion that the Catholic Church, which was the likely inspiration of the church in this anime, was anti-heliocentrism and anti-science. This was simply not true. Consider Nicholas Copernicus, who is from Poland, the country in which our anime setting is likely inspired from. This man is the most important astronomer regarding the development of heliocentrism. Also, if you're not aware, he was Catholic, and various priests within the church, including the Pope, during his time in the early 1500s, were interested in his heliocentric theory. And if you're planning to invoke Galileo Galilei's name in this conversation, the problem with Mr. Telescope is twofold. First, he presented heliocentrism as if it was already proven, which at the time didn't have enough evidence to say so. Because really, if you're a self-respecting scientist, you don't go about preaching something that you don't have evidence for. That's not very scientific of you. Worse, he presented heliocentrism in such a way that he even insulted the Pope of his time in the early 1600s, a century after Copernicus. Basically, Mr. G was not good at interacting with the church, unlike Copernicus who merely presented heliocentrism as a theory for consideration. Having clarified this long-standing myth, the opposition of the church towards heliocentrism in this anime is likely done so by the author to give the story a sort of danger and high-stakes decision-making. Because otherwise, watching an anime on how to prove heliocentrism without an almost omnipresent bad guy such as the church is going to be quite boring especially if you're not familiar with the jargon involved. But here's the thing. For some folks, this liberty that the author did can be a deal breaker, especially if they want a historically accurate anime. That criticism is understandable. So in the end, it all boils down to whether you're okay with what the author decided to do here or not. Assuming that you have no problems with this liberty by the author, then I must say, I actually love the first three episodes of this anime. And what happened to Rafal by the end of episode 3? That was cinema. And it definitely meant that this anime isn't going to pull any punches. And I'm definitely locked in for the rest of the episodes. So yeah, that's about it for me. Until next time then, lads.